And we start with four words we hate to hear, Anthony Davis injury update. The brow hurt his left index finger Friday night, left his status again in doubt as the Pelicans struggle to stay afloat in a very difficult and very devastating West. And with that, I want to welcome in our good buddy Woj. What is the latest? Mr. Wojnarowski. Uh, Michelle, I, I talked to Anthony Davis's agent, Rich Paul, tonight, and he tells me that Davis could return as soon as next week from this uh, finger injury. They met with uh, and consulted with uh, some hand specialists today, and they're going to reevaluate him on Friday, which is the one week anniversary of the injury uh, Davis suffered in Portland. Uh, then they're going to re-examine re him every 48 to 72 hours. They need to see the swelling go down. They need to see the range of motion improve. But uh, as Paul said, you know, originally, you know, yesterday, the day before, he had concerns that uh, Davis might be out all the way through the All-Star break, but that's not the case. And uh, for New Orleans, they need him back. You know, they're uh, on the outside looking in in the Western Conference playoff chase. Uh, and they see an opportunity here to get him back as soon as maybe late next week. All right, so that's that's better news than we at first anticipated. Woj, don't go anywhere. I want to ask you guys. Pelicans seem to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. They obviously are up against it as far as wanting to keep Anthony Davis there. But if they start to fall further and further out of playoff contention, what does that do to their strategy? Well, look, I, I'm not moving Anthony Davis until he tells me he's not coming back because he'll never recover from that. And look, I don't buy that there's not talent there. You don't get in this league with all the scoring to be the third best offense in the league if there's not talent around him. I've been saying it, I'm a broken record. This team's <laughs> gonna have to decide they wanna guard somebody and that has nothing to do with the talent around him. This is yeah, a, I, time to show it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you don't, you don't just get rid of a Anthony Davis. You know, he's a generational talent and coach is right. They just need improved defense. They can obviously score the ball. You know, they just need a better defensive philosophy. I mean, it's not like they don't have good defensive players. Drew Holiday, Etwan Moore, you know, Anthony Davis, they have, they have good defense of guys around them. So I just don't understand why they're not in a better position than they are today, being in the 12th slot with a guy who is considered by many a top five player in the league. And no I, question. I, Alvin Gentry, I think one of the games last week, when they were not very good defensively again. He even said that at one point. He said, our guys need to either want to play defense or we'll find somebody who will. So you could hear the frustration. I think he's exactly what you're saying. They've got people. They do. They have the people, like Paul said, and they can score the ball. There's talent there. And like they've got good individual defenders. There's no reason they can't step on the gas a little bit defensively here over the second half of the year. We're going to stick with the, uh, the Western Conference because after losing 12 of 13, the Grizzlies appear ready to start to rebuild. And uh, we'll go back to Woj here in a second. Memphis is now, according to him, listening to offers for its two biggest stars, Mark Gasol and Mike Conley. Gasol has a little over 25 million bucks left, a player option left next season. And Conley can still make $67 million of the last two years of that deal. This one's interesting, Woj. What happens next for Memphis? Well, it will be interesting to see what the market looks like for both players. And, and that's what Memphis wanted to do between now and the trade deadline. With Marcus Saul, he can opt out of his contract at the end of this season. Uh, he's owed over $25 million next year if he wanted to opt in. So if you're going to trade for Marcus Saul, you want to know, number one, where his head is on opting in or out of the contract. And then if you want to re-sign him, uh, which, you, which you'd likely do if you're going to give up some assets to trade for him, you're going to have to want a sense of what it's going to cost to do that. With Mike Connolly, he's a younger player, 31 years old, but he'll essentially be guaranteed $67 million through 2021. And I think there's teams who are going to be willing to take that contract down and take on Mike Connolly, but what's Memphis going to be able to get back in return? You know, they want what every team wants when they're trading, you know, veteran star players. They want draft picks. They want good young players. They want salary cap relief. Well, they may have to hope just to get one of those three, and, and teams may say, hey, we're taking out all of Conley's money. We're not looking to give you back much of value. That's what Memphis has to find out between now and the trade deadline because they can just hold on to both of them and keep going forward for the rest of the season. They don't have to trade them. Woj, thank you. As always, stay warm out there on the East Coast. Uh, Paul, I'll start with you. Let's mm -hmm. just play where should they go? What's the best possible destination for Conley first? Right now, you know, a guy like Conley who's, who's getting up there in age, got a big deal. You got to look at a team like Detroit. Hmm. I mean, Reggie Jackson, he's been solid, but Mike 
Conley gives them a little more stability at the point guard. And for Mark, I think Brooklyn will be a good destination for him. Wow. I mean, uh, they're a team on the rise. They may make the playoffs this year. They add another veteran center that, that has experience. So, I mean, that may be a good look for both of them. I can't read your face, Dan. <laughs> no, no, I think those are both. It, it's really hard to tell because yeah, Woj I mean, has got it right. I mean, the money is what's really going to play into this, what they can get it back. I'd like to see Mike Conley go home to Indianapolis and play for the Pacers. Put him with, ooh, besides be Victor Oladipo yeah. in that back court. And I think now they're the most overlooked team in the East anyway. They're True. third. They're ahead of Philly. In Boston, but we talk about those teams as contenders. Add Mike Conley to Indiana, I think they'd be great. And I'd love to see uh, Marcus Saul in Charlotte. I don't know how they do that, but I'd like them to see him to get Kimba some help there to be able to keep him around. They don't have much on their front line, particularly offensively. I'd like to see him. That was some Eastern Conference love from both of you guys. That was very nice. It's a little easier to win in the East. Yeah. 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 That's fair. <laughs>